Welcome back to the channel everyone. This video here is going to expand a little bit more on the previous video on repairing kinks and frame rails. Now we're on a unibody uh, car front end that has been hit, got side sway in it, got some kinks in there. Now years ago they used to always claim you could repair these kinks if there was under 90 degrees of bend in it. So this rail here it's got this kink comes up this way. If this area is greater than 90 degrees, it has to be replaced. But it's possible you're going to have a small bend in it here. You're not within the 90 or you're not over 90 degrees, so that can be repaired. Now, every manufacturer has different uh, views on this now, so you still have to go by their recommendations. And what usually happens. You get a sharp kink in here, say here's your frame rail, and you've got that kink running through here, you're going to get small little stress cracks in there. Once you get to that point, it needs to be replaced. So, like I said, every manufacturer is different, every frame is different, and when I said in that last video I was going to show a few options to deal with these. Uh, for years, GM, if you've seen uh, GM frame rails, where you could section part of it, and you used to buy, you get a section of rail, and you would see that symbol on here, and it would have an arrow, and it'd be on the side, inside or outside, and that meant you could cut it right in front of that arrow. So it could be right in this area, it could be up here, depends where it falls, that was an option. And a lot of times what I've done, if this area was salvageable and you only needed to put this inner in, I'd just make a cut through this kink up and down to relieve the pressure, the stress from that buckle, and then do my pulling. Put my forward pressure on there, that takes this kink out of the equation. It takes less pressure to straighten that. This panel can be salvaged and you could just put the inner one in. If you're over on this side, it's basically the same thing. It's a lot easier to get to on the outside on the, the, the right rail. But if this rail here was, say it just had a slight bend to it and it was repairable, but you couldn't get to it and you could actually section this outer, I would remove the outer, wherever they told you you could section, and then do your pulling on here, work this kink out, put your new piece in. Another option that I've done too, you can actually, if, if you're able to section this rail, instead of even buying that section, and if it's, if it just got a small bend to it, I would take and cut it right where it, you're allowed to section it, drill out the spot wells, remove that piece, then do your repair on the inner rail. Now you don't have to worry about matching this up. When you go to put that piece back on there, you've got one cut that you made with your cutoff wheel. If you used a spot weld bit to drill your welds out, you just put that right back into place. It's, it, it'll line itself back up, you weld it in. So there are a few options you can do with these, but you have to determine, is it a kink or is it a bend? Now, a lot of times the manufacturers, they'll say you can't uh, section our rails, but everybody's seen it, the insurance company will come in and they say, we have a sectioning procedure in our program. If that's the case, if they are wanting to section a rail, have that responsibility put on them, the shop and the insurance company. The technician shouldn't be making the, uh, the decision what you're going to do with this rail. First you go by the manufacturer, then you, uh, you know, if, if you can't put a whole rail in, a lot of times what it's, what's happening now, the cost of these cars, uh, uh, repairs and, and uh, parts prices, they're being totaled out. So the insurance companies say, well, we got a procedure in our, in our program and you can section it here. Get it in writing, put the responsibility on them. Don't uh, just say, oh yeah, I've done these before. You know, and that's a little different. If you're working on a car, you bought a total and you're gonna work on it. 
yourself at home and you're going to fix it up and sell it, you still have to make it a good repair and the liability is 100% on you. So, you know, there's always that risk. So that's the, the main thing that you have to think about on any of these rails is this kink versus bend. What can you do? Can you section? Uh, Toyota was another one. You could buy sections from them and they were actually pretty nice to put in because you could buy, it'd come with the top, let's say. I got a rail like this. You could buy the outer panel. Sometimes you could get the, the inner panel. You could get a section of it and they gave you the procedures too. Um, but these rails are getting, a lot of them are ultra high strength steel now. Probably Honda is about the toughest I've found out there. Uh, if you put a rail in a Honda, you know what it's like to try and drill these spot wells out. It's almost impossible. The rails are just about as tough. So anytime you get a small kink in here, it's probably going to have some stress cracks in it. Now it's a different story. The closer you get to the front of this, like I said before, Sometimes you can just buy this end cap, which is a sacrificial piece, take that off, and if it's a small bend, you can get in there with a, uh, the little port of power, work that out. But the main thing with these videos here on this, the kinks and the rails, is just the, the way that you need to pull on these to relieve the kink. Like I said, you don't grab it and just pull off to the side. So you have to take all these things into consideration, uh, like I said, don't make the decision you're, you're on your own, what you're going to do with this rail. Now, going back, let me tell you a little story. Year, it was probably the late 80s. GM come out with a recommendation. If you had a crack anywhere in the frame row, you had to replace it. So, if you remember, going back a few years, GM, all their frame rails, they'd get hit, and they would always crack right in these corners. Guaranteed, it didn't hardly take much of an impact. And what happened, there was a, it was a body shop at one of the dealerships, a GM dealership. They had the factory reps come out to their shop and says, now we have a half inch crack in this front of this rail and your recommendation is to replace the whole rail. So at that point, you're gonna pretty much cut this whole car apart. You've got all these wells you've got to chase under the floor pan, up the cowl, the tower, you got to try and duplicate these welds, duplicate corrosion resistance, and make that factory new again just for a little half inch crack. GM come back and says, well, they changed it. If it's in six inches, the first six inches of rail, you could section it or you could weld it back up. But again, that shop had GM make the decision and they changed their, their story on that. And they said, yeah, small crack, weld it up. So anyway, like I said, all these kinks, buckles, let somebody else make that decision. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of options out there. Maybe you can repair it. Another thing too, uh, insurance companies seem to go, oh, we're going to buy a U-section rail and just put that in there. Most manufacturers don't allow anything used to be put on a car. No used quarter panels if they do, or if you do do that repair, uh, once again, you're liable for it. So, uh, like I said, the main thing what these videos doing is just to show you the procedure to pull on a, a kink or a bend, depending what you got, and the proper way to repair it. Like I said, there's also that rail saver I've seen. I've seen advertised that'll fit in here, push that out. You know, I've never used it, but it looks like it'd be a good product if it's if it's uh, advisable that you can repair that rail. So, thanks for watching this video. The next one coming up, I'm not sure what I'm going to cover, but uh, it'll be something I guarantee you. So, thanks for watching.